Hi, it's Mike here, and thanks for joining me for another start to finish video. Today I am guest designing for Indigo Blue, and we're going to be creating something a little bit different. So, we're going to begin by using this craft paper mache masquerade mask and the Indigo Blue Gesso Good, which is a black gesso, and I'm going to paint the gesso all over the mask, the front and the back and I'm going to heat set it and give it one or two coats. For those that are interested, I will be speeding this video up to at least five times its normal speed because it's one of those processes where it does take a little bit of time, but it is quite repetitive. So once I've given the mask a couple of coats all over, I'm going to heat set to make sure that everywhere is completely dry before we begin the second stage. And the second stage is the bit that I find the most fun. So now we're all dry. Um, I'm happy that everything is ready. I'm going to take out my junk tub and in here is any kind of old uh, embellishment. Now in there I've got buttons, I've got screws, I've got nuts, I've got bolts, I've got washers, I've got any old bits of leftover um, findings from jewellery, any old jewellery, costume jewellery. I've got bits of old plugs, uh, for a bit of electrical equipment, I've got fuses, I've got lots and lots of different things in there and normally there's just one or two odds and ends that normally would have got thrown away or not used that you can use on a project like this and they're all going to go on to the front of this mask as you will see. Now for the process of speeding the video up uh, I'm not going to show you the whole process of doing the whole areas of the mask that I'm putting on. I'm only going to complete the right hand side that you can see there and then I'll show you some photographs of the interim stage where I've done up the front of it before I've moved on to stage three. So as you can see in there there's wooden bits, there's metal findings, there's buttons, uh, there's going to be all sorts of things going on there. And there you go, that's the completed right hand side of the mask. And now I'm going to go ahead and do the left hand side and bring some of those items across. Uh, here you go, you can see the finished item or the finished front and sides of that mask. So there's a clearer view of everything that I've stuck on the front. As you can see, it's almost everything by the kitchen sink. There's buttons, numbers, there's little cogs, there's washers, there's little charms that I've stuck on there that you can use almost anything. So once again, the indigo blue black gesso comes out and I'm going to use a smaller brush and now I'm going to paint over all of the items on the mask to uniform all of the colors. So it doesn't make any difference whether you're using pink, yellow, green, blue, whatever. They're all going to get painted black and will be unified. So in between each coat I will be using the heat tool to dry the gesso so I can apply a second or maybe even a third coat to make sure that all of the individual colours and the shininess of the metal embellishments has been covered correctly or as, as deeply as I want it to be. But a word of warning, I am using a heat tool, so if you're using a heat tool and you're using a hot glue gun, remember you've got metal embellishments on there, they will get very hot. And if you are using a glue gun, that the glue may melt again, so it will become very, very hot too. So just be careful. So 
So that's all of the right hand side of the mask painted with the black gesso. And once it's dried, I'll move on to the other side of the mask as well. Don't forget if you've got any embellishments that are overhanging or you can see the underside from the back, just nip in there with your brush as well just to make sure that you're covering everywhere. Don't be afraid to give it two or three coats. If it looks like it needs it, give it another one. Better safe than sorry. I tend to put them down or put it down and look at it from all different angles to make sure that I've got everywhere and I haven't missed a spot and then I'll just give it a touch up here and there and then heat set it just to dry off the gesso before I move on to the next section. So you may see me just adding bits here and there just to make sure that I've got everything as an even coating. At the end of each of these sections I will show you some photographs, um, some close up photographs um, of, of each one in a bit more detail or of each stage in a bit more detail. So the next stage, we're gonna add some color. This is a spritz made using the uh, Artist Acrylic Paint from Indigo Blue, and this color is called Aladdin, which is a purpley colour. I am going to heat set in between each one. Because it's acrylic paint, it does dry very, very quickly. So you can get a lot done in a very, very short space of time. So next is the Emerald City, which is a green, obviously, hence the emerald. Again, all of these are metallic paints. So the Aladdin, which is the purple, and the green, and the Sleeping Beauty, which is a blue one, which you'll see me use in a moment, they're all metallic acrylic paints, and the luster is amazing on them. So there's the Sleeping Beauty. As you can see, they've all got a lovely fairy tale theme to them, and I'm just spritzing in random patterns across the front of the mask. I'm not using any of the color on the back, because you're never gonna see that. So I'm just spritzing it in strategic locations or random patterns across the front of the mask and then heat set in between each one. Don't forget it will get incredibly hot so remember if you're going to pick it up not to touch any of the metal bits. And there's a bit of a closer view with some of the that mic is showing really really strongly and I'm just going to make sure that all of the paint is dry uh, and that nothing's falling off so I've decided it needs a little bit more color so I'm just going to spritz a few more areas and just touch up where I think it's needed if there's an area where I don't think has enough color on I'll just give it a little bit of a spritz and then heat set it before moving on to the next stage Okay, I think I'm just about happy with the colour on the mask now, so I will show you some still photos of the finished item. When I say finished, I mean at that stage before we move on to the next one. So next out comes the Gold Finger, which is a gold acrylic paint. And for this, I'm using a slightly wider brush, and I'm gonna put some of the gold paint down onto my craft mat and I've made sure that the brush is really, really dry, so I'm going to now dry brush over those metal embellishments, just adding 
a little bit of gold luster all over the edges, catching the highlights uh, of all those embellishments. Because you're only putting the paint on very, very lightly and very, very thinly, there's no real need to heat set this. So I probably don't, won't get the heat gun out on this at all. And this is the stage where I think it all starts, come, starts to come together. It really is effective when you've got all that dark colour behind in all the, the nooks and the crannies and you're literally just picking out the, the top edges on the, the highlights and the crags with the gold uh, and it just really starts to pop. One of the things to remember when doing a project like this is that if you make a mistake and you put far too much gold paint on, um, if you haven't got your brush dry enough and you, you think you've added too much on there, don't worry about it. You can either go back and add more of the metallic blues, the greens and the purples, or you can just start again and just paint over the areas that you don't like in the black gesso, dry it off, add your colour again, and then go back in and dust over with your gold paint. And you can do that as many times as you want until you're 100% happy with the way it looks. Even at this stage now, if I wasn't happy, I wouldn't hesitate to stop what I was doing and paint the whole thing black and start again. But I'm happy with the color on this one, so I don't have to paint it again. So with that, I'm now going to bring out the vodka martini which is a silver acrylic paint and I'm going to start adding in some highlights and where I think the gold is a little bit too intense I'm going to add some of the silver paint over the top just to tone it down a little bit. Now I'm also going to add some of the silver paint on the areas that I think would be natural highlights to it so I'm going to paint it uh, on the bridge of the nose I'm also going to do it on the eyebrow ridges that don't have any of the embellishments on because those are the areas that I think the light would naturally shine on. There you go, I'm doing the, the eyebrow ridge there and I'll do the other side and then the bridge of the nose. And I just think it helps to tone all that gold colour down a little bit. So nearing the end of the project now, there's not a lot else that I want to do with it. I've got the colour that I wanted on there and as you can see under my studio lights it does look um, as vibrant as, as it does in real life. So I'm going to insert some photos so you can see exactly what it looks like at the end. Well that's about it for me for this time so hopefully you've enjoyed that and you'll join me again for my next start to finish video.